Welcome back, hobbyists. Uh, learning as a hobby here. Uh, I wanted to go through um, section 1.2 in uh, the elementary cryptanalysis book that we're, we're working our way through uh, by Sinkov, um, Abraham Sinkov. So let me bring up my notes and I'll be doing the exercise set for this section uh, in this video as well, uh, because the section's kind of short and the, there's only a few uh, relatively straightforward problems at the end of the section as well. So we should be able to get both of those done in this one video. All right, so let me bring up my notes. Um, here we go. All right, so this section is basically on um, a little bit of information on congruences, uh, because we're going to be using those for um, for this chapter. So uh, we'll just say what we mean by congruence first. So since there are 26 letters in the English alphabet, we'll be working only with the complete what are called the what's called the complete set of residues, the numbers one through 26. Uh, and that's again, just because there's 26 letters in the English alphabet. Um, another way you could say this is we're working uh, with the integers modulo 26. So here the definition uh, of A being congruent to B mod modulo 26 is given by this um, definition. So if A and B are integers, we say A is congruent to B modulo 26. If A minus B is equal to 26K for some integer K, um, I should write something down here because um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but the notation that we use for this uh, relationship we, when A is congruent to B modulo 26, uh, it's standard notation looks like this. So this is red, A is congruent to B mod 26. Um, this um, triple equal sign here is, is uh, a type of e uh, equivalence. Uh, it's it's a, an equivalence relation. That partitions the set of integers into what are called 22, uh, sorry, 26 equivalence classes, uh, each of which can be denoted by the members one, two, et cetera, et cetera, up to 26. Um, so that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be working modulo 26, the integers modulo 26, right? Uh, any set of 26 consecutive integers form a complete set of residues. Uh, modulo 26. So you could use any consecutive 26 numbers, but the most convenient uh, choices would be either, you know, 0 to 25 or 1 to 26. Um, in the book here, he says, we'll, we'll be sticking to this set of res uh, complete set of residues um, because, you know, we're na labeling the the English letters 1 through 26. So um, this is another convenient choice where a would be zero as opposed to 26 being zero. But uh, like I said, he w usually in cryptography, I guess you would use these because, uh, you know, we usually label A as, as one as opposed to zero. So I guess it's just a convention. But um, so that's the set of residue, complete set of residues that we'll be using. Um, for any integer A, we can find integers Q and R called the quotient and remainder, such that A is equal to 26Q plus R. Um, hopefully you guys remember this from grade school, or whatever, right? This is uh, the division algorithm. Um, so uh, the number R, which is called the remainder, uh, will be a number, um, a unique number between zero and 26. Uh, it could be equal to zero, but we're not gonna allow it to be equal to 26. So if R is 26, then we would say, you know, we would say that A uh, would be congruent to zero mod 26. Whoops, mod 26. All right. All right, and then so just some examples just so you can see how this works. So 55 is, if you divide um, 55 by 26, it can go in uh, twice and you get a remainder of three. So 55 is 26 times two plus three, uh, which means in terms of the definition of congruence, that means that five is congruent to, um, sorry, this should be a 55 here. 55 is congruent to, three mod 26. 
right? We could also do, uh, you know, just another example that I'm making up here. Negative 101, so you could do this with negative numbers too. Negative 101 is equal to 26 times minus 4 plus 3. So that means that negative 101 is congruent to 3 mod 26, all right? Uh, I just chose these numbers at random. I didn't mean to make them both congruent to 3, but it, they are. But, you know, you could get any number from a remainder of any uh value from 1 to 26 or uh, 0 to 25, if you like. <clears throat> uh, okay, so, and then here I just make saying this note, but I already talked about that. So uh, in general, uh, if A and B are integers and N is a natural number, we can define congruence modulo a natural number in general here. So we say A is congruent to B mod N if and only if A minus B is N times K for some uh, integer k in z. All right. Um, we could also do mod, uh, arithmetic with modular, um, with the integers modulo n. Uh, here he only talks about addition and subtraction because the first thing that we're going to be looking at are additive alphabets. But later on, we'll look at multiplicative alphabets. And then more generally, we'll look at uh, affine alphabets and then also, uh, or sorry, affine ciphers and then also. Um, uh, more more general types of substitution ciphers uh, where we'll we'll look at uh, you know it'll permutate just general permutations of the twenty six letters. So, but here we'll we'll focus on the sim sort of like the simplest case to start with. So we can perform er er uh, arithmetic operations on residue systems, for example. Uh, if A is congruent to B mod N and C is congruent to D mod N, then a plus C is congruent to B plus D mod N, and A minus C is congruent to B minus D mod N. So, you know, in other words, um, if you add congruent to congruent, the sums are congruent. And if you subtract congruent from congruent, then the um, uh, the differences are congruent as well. And just a, a quick proof of that. So for to prove the first thing, uh, again, A congruent to B mod N and C congruent to D mod N, from the definition means that there exists integers k and m such that a minus b is nk, c minus d is nm, then n times k plus m, if you distribute, is nk plus nm, which is the same thing as a minus b plus c minus d, and then just uh, rearranging using the, the uh, distributive and commutative laws, uh, you get a plus c minus uh, B plus D, which by definition means that A plus C is congruent to B, B plus D mod N. And similar thing for uh, the difference. So N times K minus M is the same thing as NK minus NM, which is A minus B uh, minus C minus D when you, re, you know, uh, and then when you rearrange, you get A minus C minus B minus D, just using com uh, the commutative law and the uh, distributive law for um, uh for the integers, all right? So that by definition, that means A minus C is congruent to B minus D mod N, okay? And uh, with these two, the, with that 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 proposition, uh, we can use that, that those facts to solve congruence equations like we have here. So for example, if you wanna solve X plus A congruent to B mod N, um, all you have to do is uh, subtract, um, a from both sides of the equation, and that tells you what x has to be. Uh, what you get as a solution here actually is an entire equivalence class of integers. Um, but here we're sort of thinking of those sets as like the individual representative from the residue class, if that makes sense. So uh, every congruence of the form x plus, sorry, <laughs> x plus or minus k is congruent to b mod n has unique solution in the set you know, the, the residue set uh, zero through n minus one of the form B minus uh, plus minus or plus K modulo N. Um, so let me just, maybe I should say, cause it might, if you've never seen this before, it might be a little bit confusing. Let me see if I can actually, sh or, or you know what, I'll illustrate it with the examples cause it'll make more concrete sense uh, if we have actual numbers involved, let's do it like that. So here's the exercise set. All right, um, so there's only a few problems and they're relatively straightforward. Uh, the first problem uh, says if the, so there's two parts to it. Part A says, if the first day of a month is Monday, what day of the week is represented by dates congruent to three modulo seven during that month? Let's do that one first. 
So if Monday is, you know, the first day of the month, then that means that Wednesday would be uh, the third day of the month, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So any number that's congruent to three modulo seven would give you a Wednesday. So if the day is congruent to three mod seven, then it is a Wednesday, right? Um, that's the basically the answer for uh, part A. Part B, what fraction of a pound is involved in any weight, which is a number of ounces congruent to 20 modulo 16, because uh, there's 16 ounces in a pound. Um, so here, again, same idea. So X congruent to 20 mod 16 uh, is equivalent to uh, to X being congruent to um, 4 mod 16, right? 20 minus 16 is 4. So uh, if X is congruent to 20 mod 16, then X is congruent to 4 mod 16, which means that the weight of the object involves a fraction, uh, you know, you have some integer number of pounds plus a fraction, a fractional amount of the pounds left over, right? Uh, there's four, in other words, there's four ounces left over. Four out of 16 is one quarter. So you, you have a fractional um uh, amount uh, of a quarter of a pound for whatever the weight is. Uh, oh, well, I actually hear they said the weight was 20, so 20 ounces. All right, so it's uh, a pound and a quarter, I guess. Um, okay, so question number four, I, I'll illustrate what I was saying before about it, the equivalence classes as the solutions to these congruences uh, with with these next two examples. So here they want us to solve X plus 12 congruent to three mod 15. All right, so uh, 18 is also congruent to three mod 15 because if you divide 18 by 15, you get a remainder of three. So that means that X plus 12 also is congruent to 18 mod 15. And then here I could subtract 12 from both sides. And that gives you that X is congruent to six mod 15. So let me show you what I mean by what, what this means in terms of the, the solution set. Um, we consider this to be sort of like, so this is the like representative of the equivalence class modulo 15. So for example, uh, we might write it like this. So sometimes you'll see equivalence classes written like this, or sometimes you'll see it written like this with a bar on top. Uh, this means um, residue class. So six mod 15 um, represents in terms of the integers is the entire set of integers uh, starting, well, it goes in both directions. It would be, um, so if you, you know, subtract 15 and add 15, any number of times you get, um, you get the same, uh, an element of the same equivalence class. So for example, dot, 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 like if I take six minus 15, you would get, what is that? Negative nine. Then you would get, uh, add 15, you get six, then you would get 21 and so on. So, you know, any, if you take six and add or subtract any integer multiple of 15, you get an element in that equivalence class. So that's what the solution means. Any of these numbers is equivalent to six mod 15, all right? So X, the solution to this congruence is an equivalence class, not just a single number, if that, hopefully that makes sense, all right? So that's what I, I was talking about before. Um, and then there's one last problem, which is similar, except it involves a difference instead of a sum. So here, solve y minus one congruent to 13 mod six. Uh, 13 mod six is the same thing as one mod six because 13 is 12, 12 which is two times six plus one. And then just add one to both sides. Uh, so you get y is equal to two mod six. And again, the, this, the solution set here is actually an equivalence class, so two, the equivalence class is two mod six, or if you like two bar, uh, which is, um, let's see. So you would take two and add or subtract any integer multiple of six. So for example, dot, 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 negative four, two, um, eight, and so on. It goes on forever in both directions. So that's what we mean by the solution of the, the um, uh, of that congruence. Okay. Um, so that's basically it. That's like I said, it's a short, short section. Um, the next section is on uh, additive. Uh, let me just stop the screen share. The next section is on additive alphabets in general, I think. We already looked at one example of a, an additive alphabet. That was the Caesar 
the Caesar cipher. Um, let me just see. Section 1.3 is on additive alphabets. Uh, yeah, and then 1.7 is on multiplicative alphabets, and then 1.8 is on affine ciphers. And then chapter two is on general uh, mono, uh, mono alphabetic substitutions. Um, so we'll be working with um, permutations in, in that, uh, permutations of the alphabet in that section. I'm oh, sorry, in that chapter. So, all right, guys, <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it here. Um, I have section the, the exercise set for section 2.2 .2 in Taylor coming up soon keep an eye out for that and also uh I forgot if I mentioned this at the beginning of the video but I will be doing uh chapter one in Stillwell's elements of number theory um because I think it at least the first few chapters in this will complement nicely the this book so um look out for those videos uh and of course uh, I also have um uh, I'm going to be finishing up chapter one in this book relatively soon, uh, Mathematics and its History, also by Stillwell, as well as all the other stuff. I just been I'm, I'm trying to catch up on things because um, the last two weeks I've been like super busy with work, so I haven't been posting videos, but uh, I should be able to get back to my regular schedule posting now. So uh, look out for those videos, guys. Thanks for watching. Please do like and subscribe if you enjoy this content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.